right, so here he is, one of the better offensive takedown guys we have in the UFC DC. And if anyone is well equipped to speak to this, it is you. The opponent knows what's coming. At least to this point in the UFC, no one's been able to stop. He just has to keep him away. Because the moment this guy gets close enough to either grab a leg or make body contact, right. now you're in trouble. He has a knowledge and an understanding of position from a lifetime of just all grappling, judo, wrestling, uh, Sambo, he does it all, and he has just so many ways to get you to the floor. This guy wants to me that if he can get your leg, he's going to finish. Right. Because he's going to give you so many things to think about, you will not be able to process and keep up with him, and eventually you're on the mat. It's unbelievable to watch him apply that knowledge to the big part of And as the wrestlers say, this is not a guy you want anywhere near your bracket. No, you don't want him in the bracket. God, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> We are live at Toyota Center tonight. DC, this is a venue that has been good to you and your team, and we'll see who can make some more UFC history here tonight. Houston is just a great fight since You don't really stand after you take a head kick like this. That is such toughness to even be on the feet like this. And makes this in a takedown. Why not? Big ground and pound. All right, so not enough action there on the ground. The referee brings the fight back to the feet, and we are back underway. Oh, how technical is that? Nice straight punch. Throwing that jab, no good. Both guys appeared to land there. Oh, that is a furious inside leg kick. You ever taken, like, five feet to the inside of your leg? That don't feel good. I mean, slapping your leg hurts. Imagine someone this side kicking you with his shit in the inside of your leg. You cannot take many of those kicks. Just touching him with the jab. He's got to start kicking, kicking the body. What a beautiful uppercut. It landed beautifully, perfect placement on that shot. Well, he rocked him, but couldn't finish him. He rocked him, he hurt his bad. He couldn't find that one shot to close the door. He could not turn the lights off. And now, he's tasked with trying to find that shot again. Back to his feet. Ooh. 
Well, he's landed a few big uppercuts already. I will bet you $1,000 he sets it up again. You're not taking my money, J.A. That uppercut is coming. And when it lands, it's going to land and land very damn. Always busy here with the clinch. Lands a nice punch there. He's got some hands, man. Another good thing. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment, yep. Lands the grounded pound strike here. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Now he's going full mount. Oh, he got to his spot. 20 seconds left. Posture's up now and lands the vicious head strike. Oh, there's another ground strike for good measure. Oh, he's attacking Joe now. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. Well, he had a lot more than a puncher's chance coming in. Big knockdown for him in the previous round. DC, talk us through the highlight. He got in his opponent's face, landed that big punch that put his opponent flat on his back. He couldn't get the finish, but if he lands one more time just like that, he will get the victory. Ready to fight? Ready. Second round underway. Great commitment to the That is a huge shot right there for the You don't want to eat too those. No, and he needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Nice level change. He's hit the ball here. Ground and pound the hammer. Mark Coleman would be proud. This is a terrible position. Good work, guys. Come on. All right, half guard position here, DC. You have an extra hop in your step when you talk about fighters working out of this half. Oh, man. I like half guard as a top fighter. I understand half guard as a bottom fighter. Don't want to be there. It's right. very dangerous. But if you are there, you have to be winning. The position of the underhook opens up so many opportunities for you to either escape or sweep. In the half guard. Really maximizing his shots here on the ground. These ground strikes are starting to add up. Moving his head pretty well defensively on the ground here. Posture's up now. That's a vicious head strike. How'd he take it? And another one lands. He's trying to pound his opponent's head through the canvas. Takes his back now. Oh, big shots from the top. All right, half guard position here. We'll see what he can do with it. A lot of weapons at his disposal from this dominant position. Oh, man. I feel for a wrestler, this is the most dominant position in all of fighting because wrestlers love control. Right. And to have your upper body free and your leg able to hold your opponent in position, it is like striking gold. Build your posture, throw your punches, big damage, but then always control the far side underhook. This is a great position for a top fighter. He's in a dominant position. Look at him attacking the wrist. Ooh, that Kimura looks tight. You gotta be kidding me. How did he get out? He just stayed calm. He was able to withstand the fire. Now he finds himself out and safe. Bleeding from his cheek now. 
might try to pass here, as Glover Teixeira might say, not today. Not today. Great job of following nice with stop. the hips, keeping those legs locked and keeping them in full guard. All right, so the round is over, but not before damage was done. Cut on the cheek, sustained in that round. Cut man in there quickly as usual to try to seal it up. Protect yourself. All right, so the cut man attends to the fighter who has essentially been rendered a one-eyed fighter at this point in time. Some replays from the previous round. No defensive intent, no defensive intensity. No attention to his defense, and this costing him. Now he's dealing with a massive cut over his eye, and that's going to make it hard for him to see. He's got to change something, man. He's got to. You ready to fight? You ready? Go Third on. round underway. Oh, nice straight. That'll work. Oh, lands another beautiful strike to the body. Really starting to connect at will when it comes to working the body and especially effective doing it later in this fight. Didn't see a lot of that from this Oh, big strike lands. Big strike lands. Now he looks to try to take it. off of his back as he lands a strike from the bottom position. Great job finding his shots from the top position. That was nice. Under three minutes to go in our third round. job by him there to reverse things and get the dominant position. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. All right, so now blood is a factor. You see that he has been opened up in that eye area. Yeah, he's got hit in the eye and now there's a cut. But it's nothing to worry about too much now. But he's gotta be very careful with it as we go forward. Oh, nice. Oh, he's really starting to apply pressure on his opponent here. Different approach here in the last couple rounds. And it's the exact sense of urgency that you want to see from a fighter take the judges out of it. Oh, he did a great job of rotating him into an underhook. And again, shoots for a takedown. Again, takedown stuff. And there's a takedown attempt. Oh, he's got the same. It was absolutely perfect, John. Great place to put that up and go. High-level guard pass there as he moves into half court. You know the guy's going to his left on the pass, but you cannot stop it. He is tremendous at passing the guard. Right Using a lot of good movement. Final seconds of round three. Landing strikes nicely here from top position. And that'll do it, 15 minutes in the books. All right, there's the end of the round. I'm looking over to my left, UFC President Dana White. I think he's making out the bonus check right now. Incredible back and forth action. Sign the check, boss. These two young men deserve 50,000. Hell, let's give them each 100,000 for the performance that they just put on in one round. Both were hurt. Both were able to withstand the punishment, and I can't wait until the next round gets started. Well, I'm not sure the extent to which he has recovered, but we do see the end of the round. DC, talk us through the replay. Well, he's a tough guy. He's going to make it to the stool. He's going to survive unless you put him completely out of there. Unfortunately, he's in there with a guy that does have that ability. Well, this is crazy that this fight is still going on. An appreciative crowd obviously getting behind both fighters. Both guys just rolling like crazy in that previous round. They both came out. I'm not sure his opponent knows where he is. No, he doesn't know where he is. He's hurt real bad. That punch landed in the perfect spot. Oh, there you go. And now some 
distance as they pull apart. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. Look at the torso on the right side. Major bruising, and it's only getting worse. Oh, nice takedown defense. Oh, separation with clinch. Oh, inside kick. He does everything so well. And he's so calm. He's so calm in the face of such a big spot. Oh, nice level change. Just over three minutes to go now. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Who's hurt? Serve him up. Go get him. Single collar tie. To close the combination. Right well, the cut man's getting right excited, but nobody else is. That cut's getting worse by the minute. Every time he gets hit there, it gets a little bit messier. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment. Yep. Working out of side control here. His opponent trying to control posture, but you gotta be careful here. All right, right into side control. Upper body strength figures to be put to good use here. Yes, absolutely. And you gotta look for his opponent to turn back into him. He should chase guillotine, but the opponent turns to the opposite side. He can take his back, throw his hooks in, try to choke. Trying for a submission here. Oh, he's got the Kimura position locked in now. I thought it was over. I thought this fight was over. All right, there's the horn indicating the end of the round. So the fighter now with a cut on his lip. That is something he's going to have to deal with. You see the cut man not wasting any time getting in there. We'll see if he can shut that thing and prevent it from being a factor for him moving forward. All right, let us now take a look back at some of the highlights from that previous round. We'll see if we can isolate the exact strike that caused that cut to his lip. He landed a beautiful shot that cut him on the lip. Now, listen, guys. As long as it ain't like Jarzinho rolls and striking out to over, oh. him, you're fine. Cuts on the lip are okay unless your lip is hanging Ready off, fight? like we have seen sometimes. Ready. That is not Ready. that, but he's got to protect. I got Robbie Waller on my mind. Oh yeah, I talking about Robbie. Lip cuts. Oh my God, I was thinking about that. I couldn't remember. All right, next round is upon us. Let's see how it plays out. Looks like he's trying to set up a takedown here. There's the attempt. Storyline starting to develop here. That cut really starting to get wide open as this fight continues. And you can watch him. You see him. You can see it becoming his focus as he's popping him on that cut. And it's starting to open up more and more as the fight moves on. Oh, what a connection by him there. His opponent could be out of here soon, DC. He's almost done. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, you don't know whether to run, hide, grab, or wrestle. He's a, he, I mean, he's confused. He's as confused as he was on his first test in elementary school. Full guard now, DC. For the top fighter, you gotta be very careful because you gotta watch his neck. Oh, that killy is tight. That guillotine choke is getting very close. He's gotta lock the guard though if he wants to finish. Oh, he escapes! He Work. got out! He, wow, that is great submission defense. Well, defense doesn't always win championships in MMA, but how about the submission defense tonight thwarting one attempt after the next? Yeah, and the fact that he's just constantly under attack tells you he was very prepared for the type of fighter that he was in front of. He knew there would be some submissions coming his way. He was ready to defend them, and he has done that beautifully. Continuing to stay busy here on the ground. Two minutes now to go in this one. Pos 
posters up and huge elbow there. Oh, another ground strike gets through. He's got to be careful here. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over, John, and then he just gets up. Now he's got a good body position, yup. Really good job to land these strikes from top position. All right, so some high-level stuff there on the ground, but as they make their way back to the feet, a huge response from the crowd. Oh! What an absolutely crazy knockout here, and that's going to be a hard knockout from which to recover for his opponent. But the celebration is on, and one of the biggest wins in his UFC career. Massive win for this young fighter. He got the knockout victory. What a performance. The official decision is in. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 21 seconds of round number five. Declaring the winner by knockout, the Cyclone. All right, so there he is, the man of the hour. What a massive knockout for him to get this win in style tonight. He did everything he needed to do to find the knockout. Now he can celebrate with his family and friends as they earn this spectacular victory.